Hi everyone, welcome to Bedhead Studio and welcome to our Catwalk live streaming. My name's Maria Kovacs and I have my favourite team with me. My name is Marco Iafrate. My name is Jade Bassett, I work for Deep Hairdressing and I'm a member of the, um, the session team, so good evening. <laughs> well, good evening, I'm Warren Badagian and I'm the European Technical Director for TG and Copyright Colour. Wow, amazing. So what an amazing team we've got. So tonight guys, we're going to talk to you about the session team, um, our session course, which is amazing. What we do all around the world backstage at Fashion Week and we just want to kind of invite you into our world a little bit and have fun with it. So before I keep going, I just want to remind you, we've got some Q&A uh, a little bit later on. So the email address is session.team at tghaircare.com. So please write in, we really want to hear what you have to say. So first of all, we're going to talk about um, some trends. So I'm going to talk you through the very first trend, which is Scarlet, Scarlet, Scarlet Mood. Mood. So guys, all right. Cool, welcome back. So our first uh, trend is Scarlet Mood. So every season we go to Fashion Week and you know, it, it, it says it's called Fashion Week, but it actually goes for a really long month. So the guys do New York first, then we come back to London, then we do Milan. By the time we get to Paris, we're exhausted. Then we have about five minutes off and then we have to hurry up and write down everything that we've seen and kind of collate a visual um, presentation and course that we like to share with everybody. And uh, Warren is amazing, he does all the colour stuff for us. The amazing thing about what these guys do is they get inspiration from the catwalks and the fabrics and then turn it into colour. And he's going to talk to you a little bit about it first. Um, Scarlet Mood is going to be the first trend we're talking about. For me this is a super romantic trend. It's about female sensuality, it's about being really colourful and we talk about hair as our fabric and for, for me it kind of meshes together. It's about flowing fabrics um, and it gives you that kind of holiday feeling. So if you think about being on holidays and you have that sexy glow, this is what this trend is all about. Um, there's lots of ruffles in the trend, it's a little bit Latino and it's about natu being naturally beautiful. Uh, lots of florals in prints again which you always see in spring summer and it's about flouncing shapes. So, that goes with fabrics and hair. So Warren will talk to you about colour now. Cool, fantastic. Thanks, Maria. So as Maria said, um, what we actually communicate is um, Pantone. So we look at what the guys are doing on the runway. We look at the Pantones or the colours that we see on the, on the clothes going down the runway and we predict um, colours for spring, summer, autumn, winter. We then actually communicate and we um, speak to Maria and Marco and the rest of the session team. And when we create um, the, the session course, from a colour perspective, we then um, really dissect who the woman is. So each woman um, is represented by a trend or a tribe, and then how we communicate it to you guys is who the woman is who sits in the chair. So for Scarlet Mood, um, Maria's really spoke about the personality of who the woman is. When we talk about colour and who the woman is as well, the colour palette here is very um, seamless, it's very polished and saturated. Here the woman wants really opulent, expensive colour. So the Pantones that really go with this is like mulberry reds, um, rich brunettes, like deep cognacs, and you also see apricot and sun-kissed blondes as well. So here you can work with different techniques, so you can work with what we refer to as a global application of colour, which is from the root to the end, which can be achieved with our permanent colour range, which is um, Teacher Copyright Colour Creative, and there you would work with really expensive colour. A massive trend that we're seeing is a move away from the root stretch um, and a commercial trend that we're seeing is something that we refer to as contouring, where you can really customise the colour. So with contouring, what you create is something very similar to makeup, um, and what you actually do is accentuate certain features of the facial canvas. So you work with a deeper internal structure, and then around the face, you create softer, lighter pieces. So working with sun-kissed blondes and more like velvet blondes as well that really complement the spring summer palette. Cheers, Maria. <laughs> That's amazing, Warren. So we've done some hair for you tonight, and I think that this is a perfect way to explain every facet of what we're talking about. And we're going to go and introduce you to Vic, our first model. OK, so we've done a little bit of prep. So first of all, using Bodifying Spray as our fabric. OK, so that will just give the hair a little bit of texture. We're spraying that onto dry hair. 
just a natural blast. Of course, she has perfect hair, cheated a little bit, but if you have more movement in the hair, you can smooth it out a little bit as well. I've just done it with my mason on the ends. It's a little bit of twisting to create a natural uh, movement as well. So the idea is to create this effortless kind of look so we don't want the hair to be too perfect. And then through the front, I've just added a bit more movement with my round brush. So again, for me, that's kind of my trademark. I love that sweeping kind of feeling, so I put a little bit more effort into that. There's our hero product, our work at Hairspray. Okay, so again, spraying that onto the hair, fasten it with a little elastic band. And then you'll see me just split the hair into two in a second, a little bit more spray. Okay, so depending on the size of the ponytail is depending on how big the two sections are. And simply just twisting it round and then making a little knot out of it. So again, it's meant to be quite random and bespoke to the person that you're working on. And it can be different every single time you do it. So just fastening with some grips. Um, I use a combination of normal grips and uh, invisible grips, which is great. So it's always about using what you're most comfortable with. And then I kind of tweak it with my hands again, creating more of a texture, random texture. And the last bit again, you see me kind of turning it round, but it ends up being quite flat. So it's not quite like a ballerina bun. It's a bit more of a modern take on things. Okay. And really, when you first start learning how to do hair up, the most difficult part is knowing where to put the hair. So you see me kind of taking my time with it and looking for a visual balance. So it doesn't really have to be completely perfect. Okay, cool. So again, just using the grips to fasten it. I tend to use colours similar to the hair. If you see a grip, it's not the end of the world. Um, and you know, these kind of, we kind of break the rules with this type of session hair now. It's about um, creating something different every time. So have fun with kind of experimenting with it. So just a couple more bits. Vic has quite long hair, so I could make more loops with the hair. If it's shorter, the knot just looks a little bit smaller and more controlled. Okay, so it's really great. She's got this light color in the ends as well, which creates more of a soft texture. So moving through the front, um, detailing the hair. <clears throat> Excuse me. Again, for me, this is a really important part of this particular look because it's about making the hair look windswept and I'm using the work at spray to pull the hair away from the face. And you can see when I put the ponytail in, I left the hair quite baggy, so it allows me to mold and manipulate the shape. So in a way, it's like doing a haircut. This is how you personalize your, your hair up. So it really takes you away from being too strict with what you're doing. Okay, so we're coming back live. Fantastic, here she is. I mean, she's gorgeous, so that we cheat a little bit. We always um, work with beautiful girls, so we're really lucky. But now I'm just gonna finish the look. And for me, it's about, you know, working, setting the hair a little bit. You can see I've used some silver clips. Now these clips are amazing because, I mean, Marco talks about this all the time. It's like having an extra set of hands. So Johnny's not here tonight. So <laughs> I've had to use the silver clips. But what that does for me is kind of set the hair without um, gripping it and leaving too much of a dent because it actually doesn't have any teeth on it. So these are amazing. Okay, you can get these from most hairdressing supply shops. So now coming back to my buddy, Okay, work it. And I'm just going to not overdo it with the product. Okay, I really want this to be quite translucent so you can imagine the girls walking on the runway and the hair's moving really gently. And this is a quite animated storytelling look. So, you know, when you see her, the clothes as well moving with the hair, it's quite beautiful. These are all the little things we look out for when designers are giving us their brief as well. Um, if you know, they say the words romantic and flowing. Okay, we really have to listen and listen to all the little details. Cool, amazing. So, no more hairspray, we'll just stand back up. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to turn her around. Hang on one second, darling. Just put one more grip in it. And this is a great thing, I think, when you're finishing off hair like this as well. It's really important to do a 360 with the model and make sure that it's looking right from every single angle. So again, it's about 
remembering that the girls are going to be walking and moving, so you're going to see every angle and you have to kind of really look into the detail of it. So again, I hope you enjoyed the look and we're going on to our next trend with Marco. Okay, perfect. Thank you. See you soon. Okay, welcome back. So, second trend, uh, we have royal lineage, which is two words uh, combined together. It's two different things. When we're talking about royal, obviously we're talking about something regal. And then the lineage, we're talking about something a little bit more with the structure, stripey. So, here we have, um, Maria usually does a great job every season just collecting all the buzzwords that we use for representing the trends. This is really good for salon situations where you need to talk to your clients about new trends and new looks. So uh, here we got some of the details I was saying before. The graphic, young couture, uh, nautical stripes, which is uh, spring summer, is always uh, great to have these kind of trends. And naked, uh, naked makeup, which is a very little makeup or nothing. Uh, it's all combined with uh, monochromatic, but in terms of color, I'd like to uh, ask Warren about the trends for this, uh, for this look. You can talk Warren. about color if you want. Oh, I can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, brilliant. So like um, the last trend here, we're communicating color as well. So the first thing we'll talk about is Pantone. So here we talk about um, dove white, pale topazes and copper blondes. On the brunette palette, we're looking more at deep earth and pale earths here. So how we would communicate colour here is very much what Marco said. So you have two words that, are split, um, that make uh, one word, so royal lineage. So you have something quite regal, quite opulent, and then something quite graphic as well. So here when we talk about technique, we're again working with overall colour. But then when you work with placement colour, when you work with structured shapes, what you create is something that's more eye-catching, so exactly the same. So you're working with placement colour, block colour, but working with different sectioning patterns within the hair to create movement and texture. So how you would create this is intermixing your brands. The fantastic thing with copyright colour is when you intermix, you create something very different. So permanent colour will sit very um, saturated, where a gloss product will sit a little, um, where it's out, sit a bit more luminous. So when you create the two together, you create something more iridescent. So here what you would do is intermix your product to create your colour palette and by doing this you create more of a, a romantic feeling with the colour palette. That's great, sounds great. Um, for the Royal Lineage, the inspiration uh, for this trend is taken from Milan Fashion Week and Paris Fashion Week. The uh, iconic uh, designers for this is probably Damio Doma for Milan and uh, Iris Van Arpen for the Fashion Week uh, in Paris. So we have a, a little video in this and in the meantime is what we uh, start preparing for you. So, and then we can uh, show you what, uh, how we prepare the model. So um, everything is started by assessing the hair first, checking out the hair texture, density, and the type of products is obviously important. Here we use the body fine spray, which, uh, which, which is a direct uh, fine mist spray. Uh, we use in uh, very random big sections and use, used mainly on the surface. And then we dry the hair, just back off the face and trying to create as much natural texture as possible. Um, it's all, um, once the, you feel that the product is dry into it and if it's not enough products you can always add more. Uh, then we take side parting, natural side parting. You can go quite low with this because we're talking about the strong woman, uh, very graphic, and then we split into a triangle. This triangle section is a slightly offset and is pinned in uh, with the silver clips. Once we brush the hair down just to detangle uh, all the hair length, we split the part sections in two and we take two diagonal forward sections. We then use the work it spray. The work it spray it's, uh, is being used in two different, uh, two different way. We use much closer to the roots to create uh, a wet and more structure um, uh, effect, reducing a lot of the volume to be able to have a, a great silhouette. Um, old, it's complemented with uh, a, an old school hairnet. This allows to 
uh, flat the cuticles and also making it really, really flat. We carry on with the same sectioning pattern using uh, a generous amount of the hairspray. This hairspray is great because uh, when you use from far away, it tends to be very dry. But as you get closer to the roots, it's, uh, it gets wetter and wetter and you can adjust and you can work these hairsprays in layers. Once we uh, uh, start working through the side areas, we're then creating a little uh, curve and then everything is complemented again to flat the cuticle with a hair net. We isolated little sections at the front area. We used um, the work it spray, a generous amount through the top to create a little quiff. And then we, we gently brush towards the front and then buckle back of the face. And then everything is painted with three clips just to create a little wave. Everything is stop, stop up with a, with a hairspray until uh, you feel that it's becoming nice and solid and the hair is uh, firm and on the, same, on, on, the, on the place. We then dry everything with a hair dryer on the medium heat and then we, we just worked on the last sections with the spray and just complement the shape. You can use more lift if you like to or uh, it, it's really up to you what you're trying to achieve. It's all uh, the finishing off, as you, can, as you can see, is nice and solid. And then now as we put the towel in, we are uh, back live so we can, uh, we can show you exactly how we're finishing off. It's uh, all combined with two different textures. As we can see here, I'm going to turn a little bit, Georgie, to show you what we've done. So first of all, as I said, we start working through the top area and have uh, something a little bit more solid, uh, rigid. And then we work in towards middle end through the ends with the uh, small sections. And we use a, a little technique that we normally use, uh, the flat ironing, which is, thanks, I, I will ask my, a little help from uh, Jade, please. So we're taking a little sections. We don't need to add any more hairspray on this because we already have the body fine spray, which has been used previously here. And then with the, with the straining irons, we just go very close into the roots without creating any tension. And all we do is we're holding the sections and then we just push the hair against towards the straining irons. This is a, it's a, it's a, it's a good way to create some movement into the hair very quick without uh, creating too much of a volume. We know that if we start using a classic hot stick for this, we will get a lot more body into it. For this particular look, uh, we're referring to the royal lineage. So, um, looking for uh, something which has a little bit more structure in there. And also, I'm taking advantage of uh, the new technology of the products, which uh, allows me to, uh, with the heat, the heat is basically activates the products, and this allows me to, to have more texture without feeling that the rest of the hair gets too steady. So one last section before I move on. As you can see, I'm just creating these uh, little waves. You can work sideways as I'm, I'm, as I'm working at the moment, sideways, or you can also changing and working more like up way. So it depends if you wanted to create more a three dimensional effect. So once we finish with this, with this little techniques, what we're gonna do, we're gonna brush the hair through. But I like to do this maybe when uh, with the model standing so I can finish it off and I'll show you exactly what we had in mind. So I can take now the little towel just to save as a safeguard. And then we're using uh, the Herista, which is a, a product that I usually like to use to finishing off because it has a moisture into it. So you can get separation out of it, but at the same time, it doesn't make the hair too greasy. So you still get the natural texture. You just have that little separation, but at the same time, you don't get the grease. So just have a few more seconds. So gently just move the hair around. I mean, you don't necessarily need to pull it or brush it too much. You just pull the hair around and everything can be 
just top up to finish off with a little bit of hairspray if you like to have a little bit more body. So this is the um, interpretation of the uh, Royal Lineage. I'm just gonna show you from the front and then we do 360. So side parting, very structure for the front. Everything is uh, moving towards the middle length and ends. And then it's all finished off to give a little bit of uh, a volume for the back area. I hope you like it. We're now gonna show you the third trend, which is uh, the rendezvous. Thank you. Okay, welcome back guys. So now we're going to talk about rendezvous. So rendezvous is an amazing trend for me because it really epitomizes a catwalk woman. And, and this season we've really talked a lot about bringing um, products, uh, reminding clients how amazing catwalk is as a brand in the salon and it's a money maker. And it's not just about doing hair on the runway, but it's about creating beautiful hair that you can sell every single day and just do naturally at home as well and super easy to use. So again for me, actually the girl behind me here is the picture from the campaign that you're going to see really soon that really emphasizes the trend. Um, rendezvous for me, she's a really, it's a really youthful trend so it doesn't mean you have to be young to have this type of um, feeling but you just have to have that youthful vibe about you. Um, it's effortlessly cool, uh, it's always confident, uh, she's really chic. The hair is a little bit lived in, so it's never perfect. Um, she doesn't wear too much makeup. She doesn't use too much product in her hair. Um, and it's a casual elegance. Um, the girl has a natural swag, or woman, I should say. And she's always stylish. And about, it's about texture in the hair and in her clothes. Um, and, she's a, and it's a very carefree, feminine kind of feeling. And it's a woman who definitely knows who she is. So I really love hearing Warren talk about this trend as well. So. Yeah, this trend's amazing. I think with the, the last two trends, they have a, a definite predominant um, spirit. But with um, Rendezvous, it's actually split into two. So what you actually have is you have um, two sets of women for this one trend or tribe. You have the more natural Rendezvous and the more creative or stronger variation. So we'll talk about the more natural variation. So Rendezvous, the woman who's more organic or more natural, will want to create more um, timeless, organic looking colour. So you would look at Pantones such as Hessians um, or Velvet Blondes or very natural brunettes. How you would work with this is the woman here really wants her colour to, to match her overall complexion. So she wants it to enhance her, her inner beauty or what she sees in the mirror on a day-to-day -day basis. So hints and tips when working with copyright colour is to create a very soft organic blonde. You can work with the High Lift series um, and you can actually work with a lower activator and what you create is softer, more neutralised blondes. When you actually look at the, the rendezvous from a more creative element, so the, the different woman or the different spirit within this trend or tribe, she's um, very loud, uh, which is a natural swag, always stylish. So um, I would say she's like a, the bedhead girl who's grown up and she's moved into catwalk. So she still has that element of bedhead swag, it's which is a cat. Yeah, it? she's a catwalk woman, which is fantastic. And I think that the new um, campaign that we've, we've done has a little bit of that in it as well. So the woman here, she still wants to, to look timeless, but she wants it to be a bit more um, like popping of colour. So here you would look at pre lightener and then you would use a glossing service. So when you work with a glossing service, here she wants like rose quartz, like denim blues, and like metallic is a massive trend for, for spring, summer. What I'm gonna talk about next is at TG, we're um, really well known for not only when we look at catwalk and we look at fashion, but also our education um, is, is um, always ever-changing and always wanting to be updated. So we have something that we've developed called the TG 24-7 app. Um, and within this, you can inspire, you can draw up techniques, you can use it in very different ways. It's a fantastic tool that we use in the academy and in the studio on a day-to-day -day basis. But I'm going to talk a little bit more about it inspirationally. So if Maria was my client and she was sat in the chair and she said to me, Warren, I want you to do whatever you want to do. And I'm talking to her about Hessian blondes, Nordic blondes, um, pearls. 
I know in my head what that looks like, but to, to Maria, it can look very different. So descriptive words, is, um, sorry, descriptive words are great, but you actually need to communicate it and back it up with, a, um, with an image. So we've developed something here and you have color inspiration within the app and you also have styling inspiration as well. So if I go into color inspiration, what you actually get is a, a mood board and you can see here that we have everything from coppers to brunettes um, to blondes. So I'm going to click here to this one and I'm going to share with you this mood board. So here you can see a combination of blondes and I'm going to click on this one here, which I would refer to as like a pearl or like a nude blonde. What you actually have here is a descriptive language which you've communicated with your client. You have the mood or the, um, the image to back it up. But then what we also have is we have mixtures for you to create this as well in the salon, which is absolutely fantastic. It's a really great um, app and actually how you can download it is you go to the app store and you search for TG247 and you um, download it straight away. It's a great app to use. You can actually book online um, um, education as well. So you can book it online and you can see us in the academy um, and also book your Intel on educators as well. That's amazing, Warren. I really wish we had that around when we were younger hairdressers because what a cool way to um, give information for your clients. So I can't wait to use it. Yeah. Use Thanks, it now, Waza. <laughs> Thanks, Waza. <laughs> All right, guys, so now we're going to go and uh, speak to Jade a little bit and get hey. to know her a little bit more and see what she's done with her hair. Okay? Cool. So with my prep work for my model today, um, a lot goes into just starting to create a bit of texture with the products and things that we'll be using. So we're going to start off just by slightly damp hair, applying some of the strong mousse from the roots to the ends, evenly distribute, and then we just start brushing through with a fat, flat paddle brush. We also then start layering in a bit of salt spray just to give that bit more grit, as this style is going to be a lot more natural and a bit more lived in. We're going to keep it in sort of a very soft central part, so it's still quite young and youthful as well at the same time. And then we're going to section in from the ears and start off by drying at the front. We're going to start drying in more with a flat paddle brush rather than a round brush, because rather than having too much volume and curl, we actually want to get it a lot flatter at the root and a bit more of a bent, beveled look as a curl rather than a full-bodied curl. So following on to the other side, you would carry this on all the way through making sure that the hair isn't too wet when you start drying through. It's just literally just almost drying the product into the hair. This is one of my favourite looks. It's the kind of hair that I enjoy doing, I think, because I like that look myself also. <laughs> it's always nice to have a bit of texture and I like it to look a bit more lived in at the same time. Well, it looks really cool. It looks a little bit 70s. So, are uh, clients asking for this more in the salon, too? I think it is. I think a lot more softer looks are coming in now, sort of, your old school GHD curls and things like that are definitely out now. Um, so everyone is wanting much more of a natural look that almost looks like they've just got out of bed at the same time. So following on through the back, we literally just do these sections, split the head into two, and then again, horizontally take your section. So we're just doing it in large sections. There's no need to be too fussy about it because it is just a really nice natural feel and finish to the hair. Amazing. So this wouldn't take too long in the salon, would it? No, it would be nice and quick because you tend to just literally <clears throat> start with the damp air, apply the product and then blast quite a bit of moisture out naturally as well. Um, so then it's literally just that extra bit of product that you're drying in to create the curl as well. So once all the curls are in there, literally leaving the brush out so it stays in its wave, we would then just literally just get in the dryer on a warm and a cool heat and just starting to break out through the hair. Then starting to apply a bit of the Work It hairspray just to start setting it into place. Cool. Amazing. For me, this kind of looks like the hair that is really editorial and it's that real beachy kind of hair that clients would ask for, so it's amazing. Okay. So we're back, back live. Hello, guys. <laughs> so with our mod my model's hair, Pretty much, to be honest, we're nearly there. The prep work is the key to this style. So all we're gonna do is just run through with some of the dry shampoo, just to break it through a little bit. So it's just literally starting to break through that hairspray that we applied earlier to give it a bit more of a dry finish. And 
and then you can just see this texture starting a lot more. You almost want a bit more of like a fluffier edge over the top. And then we're just going to literally run through with the TG curling wand and just literally create almost a bit more of a dent in the hair. So I'm just going to spin you around a second. So going with the natural texture that we've already created, we're literally just going to almost hug the wand just to create that little bit more movement in there. That's so great, Jade. That, the way you're using that, I would have never have learnt in the salon. So it's, it's really cool to see you use a wand in a different way like that. Thanks to you guys. <laughs> right, so I'm just going to spin you back again. So just to lightly finish through, we're just going to run through with some of the Firm Hold hairspray. We used a lot more of the lighter products before because it's just literally just to finish and set it into place now. So again, keeping that shape coming away from the face so that we keep that bit more of a 70s feel. So this is the lovely India for our rendezvous look. Just give you a little spin. And there. So I hope you like it. Thank you very much. To be part of the session team means a lot. Creatively, it is an exciting thing. It's like a new direction, a new way of, of working with hair. With our session hair course, we take the trends that we create at New York and London and Paris and Milan and we collectively bring those together. It's about creating a course that gives hairdressers a structure for session hairdressing, different techniques, but I mask the techniques in fashion. In my area, we don't really have that many opportunities, so when the application came up for the first session team, I just knew I wanted to do it. When we actually arrive at the venue, Maria will do a demo for us, step by step. Maria has always been one of my sort of hair icons. I think she can physically make a shape out of anything. Everything backstage can be really intense and everyone's screaming, running around. And when you're a newbie to it, it can be quite, like it can really take you. When it comes to salon work, you're always doing what the client wants you to do. And um, whereas session work, you get to sort of show your creativity a lot more. I'm always talking to young people of what they think, what they see about the world. You know, you just see those light bulbs click and you, you know, you're giving them ideas to, to fuel their own creativity. You always take a wealth of experience back with you to the salon where you can incorporate into your services. It really enables me to be at the forefront of what's happening with fashion and hair. Once it's all done, you just relieve that beautiful hair's been achieved, the team's really happy and most of all the designers happy as well. We're hair creators and fashion interpreters, so you know, we've got to keep our eyes open to the things that are around us, uh, understand those, and then translate them to what we actually do behind the chair. Hey guys, welcome back. So I guess this is my favorite bit when we get to have a bit of an up close and personal. So I'm sure you enjoyed that video. I think it's really nice to hear the team talk about their experience and how it really is um, on a day-to-day, -day, uh, I think, day-to-day -day way of getting through Fashion Week and everything that we do. So it, it's really real and kind of, um, you can see that everyone's really humble and nice. So first of all, I want to talk to you a little bit about the content of what we bring out of um, Fashion Week. For TG, it's really important because it fills up our session course. So the way we try to do it is to create a styling course that is on trend but um, it's such a visual and beautiful course so we have lots of different techniques that we go through that go from very classic and controlled hair to working into really strong editorial looks so we go backstage and we look at what's happening with other hairdressers as well we don't just teach you what we've done but we try and involve everything that we pick up and bring it back to you and that's our way of giving back to the hairdresser and for me that's really close to my heart because when I started with the company many years ago, I was just a young kid in Australia that never thought I would work at Paris Fashion Week or could never dream anything like that. So it's really great to have Jade here with us. Um, so while she's here, we want to ask you a few little questions about this whole session team thing and how it came about. And 
First of all, what inspired you to become a hairdresser? Um, I think, like you said, it's probably started at a, a very young age, really. Um, my mum was always great at braiding and plaiting and things, so she always used to do my hair for school. Um, so I think I just started learning and picking it up then, really. Um, and then when I was in school, I, again, on your lunch breaks and things, you'd be doing each other's hair. Um, but I never really put that into me thinking I wanted to be a hairdresser. It was just something that I'd always done. Um, and then I was in a maths exam at school and my maths teacher came up to me and she was like, you like hair and stuff, don't you, Jade? And I was like, yeah. And she was like, oh, I've got your job interview. And I was like, oh. So I went for it and then that was it really. And now I couldn't imagine doing anything else. That's amazing, isn't it? It's kind of, when you look back at all those years of, you know, training and everything that you've put into it, um, this whole session team thing, is it something you've always wanted to do or how did it happen? How did you get into the session team? Um, <clears throat> I think I'd always realised that I hadn't just wanted to be an in-salon hairdresser. I think you'd, you'd see things on sort of television and stuff and you always think there is m so much more that you can do. Um, my old boss used to call me a hungry horse because um, she said that I was always looking for the next thing, that like I always want to challenge myself. Um, and then I first heard about Inspirational Youth and I applied for that in 2010. Um, and that was the first thing I'd done really that was out of salon. Um, getting to do like photo shoots and model castings and working with you guys. It was just, and then I realised I didn't want that to be the end. So then as soon as session team came up, I was straight in there. Uh, and we're so glad you did. It's been so great. I mean, how many seasons has it been? It's been like... It's been about four or five. Four or five <laughs> seasons. So I think for me, it's always interesting to sit down with you guys and see what you get out of it, what can you share with other hairdressers or what, what are the, the things that you can take back to the salon or your clients? I mean, you, there's so much that you can take back. Obviously some of it is a bit more sort of fashion side so you wouldn't necessarily do it in the salon but you can always mute that down at the same time. Um, so certain techniques, the way you use certain products and I think even the buzz of it all, like knowing that someone's coming over and going to London and then I go back, I'm excited. So then the staff get excited, but also the clients get excited as well. So it just makes it a better environment and then everyone wants to learn more as well. And just kind of give you more energy and yeah, makes definitely. you want to do hair. Yeah. I think for me, it's really interesting to hear that because even though it's really exhausting, it always kind of re-energizes yeah. the team and reminds you that hairdressing is really fun. Definitely. So fabulous. It's been so great to have you. So before we go, guys, we're going to go and have some quick Q&A questions as well. So we're going to reintroduce the team. Here the boys are. Fancy seeing you here. Yeah. <laughs> Good stuff. All right, so before we go as well, I really want to press this important thing about the session course because um, it's really close to our heart and, you know, you have to book in as soon as you can. They get filled up really quickly. Um, we write the course, we put it all together, we work with all the team around the world and we only do two dates per country and so you cannot miss it. It's a bit like missing the World Cup. If you don't see it, you don't care the next day. <laughs> You'll be gutted. So we've got UK, Italy, US and Germany. So please book in and make time for it because it's amazing fun. You get to look at beautiful girls um, and do a bit of hair. So what could be worse? Sounds good. Sounds good to you guys. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, we're going to do Q&A? Okay, first one. So, how do you come up with the looks you create at Fashion Week? Um, and this is can Ines I, from can Spain. I answer this? Yeah, of course you yeah. can. <laughs> uh, Ines, okay, so in terms of uh, how do you come up with the, with the looks? Usually it's a teamwork. Uh, I mean, in my opinion, from my experience, it's, uh, it's usually a teamwork because, uh, because you turn up um, to the pre-test, so you're talking to the designer, which they normally have a mood board, uh, so you need to try to understand what they're heading to with, the, with their ideas and their, their trends. And what you can do, you can add some of your ideas together with a makeup artist, so everything needs to combine with a total look. So personally, it's a teamwork, so this is how you come up with the ideas. If you wanted to know more about it just come to the session course so we can uh, <laughs> share with you more ideas i think marco is talking about this really lightly but it's quite stressful that whole hair test and we always say it's like a, a really bad date one without alcohol that doesn't sound <laughs> good at all. A bad first date anyway it's almost like a bullfight isn't it, it you never is, know what's going to happen so let's look at the next one 
I think this is yours, Waza. How do you change someone's colour from autumn, winter to spring, summer? I mean, this happens every year, doesn't it? Yeah, you can answer it if you want. <laughs> no? Do you want me to go no, for you it? Go for it. Oh, this is from Kate from the UK. Okay, well, uh, good evening, Kate. So, um, this is a really good question so, how to change someone's colour. I think this is um, something that a client, when they come in every couple of weeks to have their hair done, always want to have a slight change, whether it be a drastic change or um, one shade lighter, one shade darker. The key thing here is you really need to think about consultation. It's exactly the same with the guys who cut and style. Consultation is key. And the one thing that we have at TG is a fantastic um, course or a philosophy, um, which is called Creative Consultation, which is really the DNA of, of how we communicate colour. So within this, you would look at someone's like skin tone, you would look at their eye depth, you would look at their complexion, and then you would really communicate colour from the lifestyle awareness of the woman or her fashion tribe, so very much what we've been talking about today. You would then communicate a colour palette that works for her, um, show her imagery, um, update the technique, and I think this is really key to, to changing your client's look. Um, you can do that, or then you can pass it to someone else and they can do it for you. No, I'm joking, Kate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no jokes. <laughs> Nice one, was yeah, it? But it's a, it's a great way. So, I mean, I would have a look um, at the TG247 app and you can get any regional educator to come in and go through creative consultation or you can come and see myself, Kerry and Christelle at the, the academy. We'd love to have you there. Awesomeness. Okay, so this one of things for you, darling. So, what is your catwalk must-have product? That's from Sarah in Germany. I would have to say my must-have catwalk product would be body fine spray. Um, when it's backstage or in salon, um, you can literally use it on sort of, you can use it on damp or dry hair. Um, so you can get so many different looks out of it, whether you want just nice soft texture or a really strong structure in the hair, you can use it for both. So it's everything that you can want in a can and more. <laughs> Good stuff. I think we've got one more question. Um, how do you deal with fine hair for a curly, voluminous, natural look and longevity? That's like a miracle in a can. Yeah. Um, I think catwalk has, in the range, has everything you could possibly ask for and it, it works at its best when it's being layered. So uh, I would recommend we use curless mousse if you want a little bit of volume. Um, it's one of those things that it's all in the technique as well, so the more you layer it, if you want it to be a little bit softer, use botifying spray. Um, and then you finish it off with your favourite hairspray. So it's really up to you depending on your hair texture. Cool, so I hope you, that answers your question. Um, before we go guys, we really want to bring back the girls because they're just beautiful. It would be a waste to have them sitting in the back. Yeah. Well, let's bring them back on. <laughs> move over and show you the girls. <laughs> Good stuff. Okay, so for me, it, this explains everything, so I don't really have to talk as much, but I think looking at the three different girls, they're really, really different, and it's selling you a feeling, and, and this is what you get at a session course, and I, that's why I'm so passionate about it, because how could you get bored of looking at this type of thing every day? Um, it's been really great to have you all. I'm gonna bring the team back on to say thank you, so thank you to Warren, Marco, Jade. We wanna say thank you to Jib for styling, I want to say thank you to Michelle for makeup and the team, the crew. Thank you to Bedhead Studio. Thank you to the Catwalk team. Holly and the guys, you've been amazing. And really thank you for staying online with us and watching us. I hope you enjoyed and come back soon. Thank you. Thank you.